Perfect. Thank you, Veena. Thank you. Hello and welcome everybody to the session. I am Aarti Gopalan, part of the SAP Integration Suite Product Management Team, and I'm joined by Marty McCormick. Uh, handing it over to Marty for a quick introduction. Sure, Aarti. So, Marty McCormick, I'm part of the um, Digital Business Services S4 HANA Cloud Delivery Team, where my main focus is on integration. Thanks, Aarti. Thank you. Um, so, this is where we start from, right? As every organization is starting to digitally transform, be it to create connected enterprises or to go beyond it and to create and focus on innovation, they are basically considering systems seamlessly exchanging information between their various global entities, ensuring customer satisfaction, seamlessly exchanging data across the ecosystem of suppliers, vendors, distributors, uh, providing the best customer experiences. And all these are experiences digital experiences that are being sh uh, shared to customers, partners, and to employees in a contextual and relevant manner. Technically, when we look at this, it is nothing but a reliance on a stable integration between the heterogeneous landscape that has been, that has become much more of a reality across every organization across the world today. Right? So connecting and integrating front-end systems and the LOB applications with the digital core, the data core, is where integrations come into play. And this has become a key component of every business case that is being built today, be it uh, for organizations who are even in the cycle of uh, migrating to S4HANA. Right? SAP understands this and has built uh, clear visions on how customers can become intelligent enterprise by leveraging native and out of the box integration for standard processes. And also the focus is on building robust and easy to use integration platform that supports our ERP and LOB solution customers. So this is where there are strategy papers which have been published by SAP as well as the CEO blog, which talks about how intelligent enterprises are integrated enterprises, right? And uh, if you haven't had the time yet, please uh, do, do take some time to understand where we are heading, right? As an organization, as SAP, uh, in focusing on um, you know, the processes. Here is one slide which explains what we are doing, right? SAP, we understand processes and our customers at any given point in time are looking at process optimization, business process excellence. So we have business processes lead to cash, source to pay, recruit to retire, design to operate. The, those are have been identified at a very high level as four core intelligent enterprise processes that allows uh, the customers, employees, partners to have a 360 degrees experience. And this is what is being sought after by most of the customers that we have today. We have applications, right, which are being used in these contexts. These could be a combination of SAP, partner solutions, as well as third party applications, be it point solutions, be it niche applications that have been built uh, by uh, the organizations that are being used by our customers today for this seamless experience to be provided, right? And technically, SAP is making sure that there is a consistent security and identity management and user experience across the SAP solutions and consistent analytics view. So this is where the qualities of the BTP business process, uh, business technology platform is coming into play. Right? We are bringing in the aligned data model to simplify the seamless experience across the business processes that span the different SAP applications. The, four, uh, the most um, um, fu fundamental uh, aspect of this exercise is to ensure that the information flow across the different systems which are integrating, which are interacting is consistent, stable, and reliable. And then there are these applications which are third party and partner solutions where you we are basically uh, relying on the integration platform which becomes the um, you know the the open integrations box that you see right how how do we support these open integrations which are uh, beyond the sap to sap integrations so from sap perspective from a strategic again from a strategic view there is an ever growing integration need that has to be addressed by all organizations focusing on technology enabled growth and transformation and api first development approach is being encouraged by all our sap applications including s4 hana and this is where we have uh, apis over uh, over 
uh, 300 odd APIs, both um, OData as well as SOAP APIs, which have been uh, shared over SAP API Business Hub. We have the whitelisted CDS views that can be used to create custom OData APIs for reading data from S4HANA, as well as uh, business events which have been published and documented on SAP API Business Hub, which can be explored and consumed by you uh, in, in, you know, in the custom integrations, the custom extensions that you are building. But we also understand that customers usually begin with a tactical focus and then move on to the transformative journey as part of their evolution. And this journey is being powered with SAP uh, BTP, Business uh, Technology Platform, with the out-of-the-box content and services, right? SAP, uh, along with its select partners, are providing over 2,000 out-of-the-box integrations, pre-built integrations, as well as accelerators that are addressing the various end-to-end -end processes, which means basically that these are content which can be configured and deployed as they are, right, to, um, uh, to make sure that the end-to-end -end processes are running. At the same time, they can also be used as getting started uh, content, right? They can be further customized, further enhanced and adapted to meet the custom requirements that you may have in your organization. So this is the power that the platform and the um, toolings are providing to you, right? The typical uses, use cases of um, replicating data, connecting with uh, government regulatory agencies out there with 32 um, uh, different governments, as well as business process content to support two-tier hybrid ERP as well, um, you know, um, are all available as part of this out-of-the-box content. Uh, they have been provided by our LOB solutions in the context of integrating with S4HANA, uh, SAP to SAP integrations, as well as integrating with non-SAP solutions that are, um, you know, uh, 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 which are popularly in use uh, in the in the SaaS from the SaaS application perspective. So what this means is that for your integrated enterprises to run smoothly and seamlessly, you can rely on the maintained and delivered data from SAP, right? Uh, so it is all um, the life cycle management of all this data is being taken care by SAP. And all you have to do is rely on this maintained and delivered data to ensure your business processes, uh, uh, optimization and excellence uh, uh, exercises uh, and uh, business use cases are being addressed. As I mentioned, we also have integrations into non-SAP applications, right? The most widely used data stores, our partner solutions that brings added value. We have a rich set of connectors for seamless connectivity to 160 plus non-SAP applications that could uh, be in use across any organization. Uh, with what we call as the open connectors, we give you the flexibility to use normalized, um, again, API-based approach. That means that you are needn't be concerned about what are the applications uh, which are uh, playing a role in the communication, uh, whether these applications have released newer versions of APIs uh, and how they have to be consumed. Basically, it reduces the learning curve for, uh, for your development efforts and uh, gives you the power and speed to build integrations that power your digital core transformation projects. And finally, before uh, we jump into the hands-on exercise itself, here is a slide that is basically an overview of the enterprise-grade integration platform, uh, which is uh, provided by SAP, the SAP Integration Suite. Um, right? Uh, it comes with multiple capabilities that focuses on holistic integrations, be it classical application to application, business to business, or business to government integrations, or be it the more trending omni-channel engagements, customer 360 degrees, HR experiences, or consolidation of finance for central finance setup that are being um, you know, uh, considered as part of the digital transformation exercises across organizations today. So what we are going to see when uh, Marty uh, goes through the exercises uh, right in the next few minutes is see one of the capability in use today, but uh, in the summary, you will also be provided with a list of additional resources that you can go through to learn more about the different capabilities that you see on the screen right now. And with that, I hand it over to you, Marty. All right, thanks, Arthi. Um, all right, I've, I flipped on my video just so you can see uh, me talking. So let me share my screen really fast. So, we have a pretty sm uh, small audience, so the, the purpose of this, this session is meant to be um, interactive. So as I step through the exercise, if there are any questions, um, you know, feel free to interject along the way. We can keep it interactive so you get the most out of it. So 
I do have the I do have the exercise up on a different monitor, so I'll, I'll mainly try to stick to the script. That way, if you're following along, I am following the steps. So the the whole purpose of the exercise is basically to um, first expose an API um, from S4 HANA Cloud. So the the system we are um, talking about today or interacting with is S4 HANA Cloud Multi-Tenant Edition. So this is our software as a service public cloud offering. So the way you um, activate and expose APIs is slightly different than um, S4 HANA Single Tenant or On-Premise Edition. So um, what we'll step through today is our is our public cloud. Um, so without further ado, let's get into it. So you can see my screen, right, Arthi? Mina? Yes, Marty. Okay. Can. I've already presented for you know 10, 15 minutes, and then somebody says, "Are you sharing something?" So I just wanted to, to double check. All right. So um, the first thing that um, Oftentimes when you start a project or, or you're exploring requirements, um, the first piece of information that you typically need is how are we going to get data into or out of the SAP system? And this is where the API Business Hub comes into play. So um, I just went to api.sap.com. And one key point here is when you go to api.sap.com, you wanna make sure that you click on login in the upper right. Uh, th there are features such as um, testing out the APIs that you have to be logged in for. So an S user or a P user ID will work for the API Business Hub. So when you come to the API Business Hub, you're presented with a, a series of products, um, uh, content types, so you can explore integrations or the event framework. But today we're just going to focus on um, exploring one particular API. <clears throat> so in the, the sample scenario today, we're the, the fictional requirement is we need to extract purchase order data out of S4 to send to a third party system. So, okay, so I need to take uh, purchase order data out of S4. So what API am I going to use? So I, I, I come into the S4 HANA cloud tile and then I, I search for purchase order. So when I search for purchase order, I'm presented with um, many APIs um, both of OData and SOAP uh, API. So within the, the API hub, there are mainly two types of APIs uh, available for us for HANA Cloud. There's OData APIs, which uh, are REST-based um, and then have a, a JSON or Atom XML payload. And then there are, there are SOAP APIs. Um, typically, SOAP APIs uh, could be synchronous or asynchronous, but SOAP APIs are, are traditionally used for A to A application to application and OData APIs get used um, in the, the A2X scenarios. For example, if you're developing an application on cloud platform and need to consume the API in real time, um, OData, OData is typically a much better fit because the payloads are, are much lighter because you can request uh, the exact data elements that you need. So, in this scenario, I'm going to select the, the OData API for purchase orders. Um, and um, when I come here, I, I land on the, the API references tab. But before we, we go into the API, um, I just want to click on the details tab. So on the details tab, you can see um, basically the, the metadata URL. Here, you would be able to download the API specification. So if you wanted to see all of the fields that are available in, in basically um, a text pad format, you, you can download the API um, specification and then just, just open it with, with Notepad. Um, sorry, my computer just went a little slow. <clears throat> all right, so while that's uh, loading, just let me jump back here. Um, so with the the purchase order API. Another key point is within S4 HANA Cloud, when you um, request that your system is built, um, the, the project team basically specifies a series of scope items based on the business process that's in scope. And those scope items get activated as the system is built. So when you're looking at an API, um, <clears throat> on the API hub, it'll tell you um, which scope items contain this API. So meaning 
if your S4 HANA cloud system doesn't have one of these scope items activated, you actually won't be able to, to expose um, this API. So, so in our case, the, the system we're working with today actually has all of these scope items involved. Um, and then in my opinion, as a technical person, one of the key, the key links from the API hub, because you're often working with a business process expert, is this business documentation link. So when, when you click on the business documentation link, it, it takes you to um, help.sap.com. And this provides a more friendlier format um, of, of the, the API description, so, or the, the API. So here you have all of the fields for the entity. So purchase order header, purchase order line item, pricing elements. And then here it tells you whether the fields are, are optional or, or mandatory or you know, in some cases read only, like a creation date and created by would only be um, read only. So just to jump back real fast, um, this is the, the JSON file that I downloaded. So this would be um, basically the entire API specification. So the details tab is actually very useful because it tells you several things. One, the scope items that the API has. Two, it tells you which communication arrangements you'll need to activate. And then three, um, it provides a link directly to the business documentation that has further API info. Okay, so now um, we just wanna explore the API a little more and see if it's going to, to meet our requirements. So I'm just looking at the exercise real fast, bear with me. Um, so here I come to um, the purchase order entity, which is essentially the header level. Um, and you can click on try out. So one key point about the API hub, it does use a uh, sandbox system delivered by SAP. So the API hub itself is read only. However, um, it's not part of the exercise, but you can actually configure your own environment. Um, so if you had an S4 HANA cloud starter system or your queue system, um, you can configure your S4 HANA cloud system here. And then you could test out um, write operations, W-R-I-T-E operations. So um, patching, um, creation, but, but in, in standard or in, in the delivered API hub, it's read only. So here we're going to look at a get entity, which is a, a retrieval. And I'm just going to say, give me the top. Um, so these are all standard OData clauses. So I'm just gonna say, give me the top five records from, from the system and expand um, the purchase order item. So basically this would pull um, the first five purchase orders and then expand the line items on the purchase order. So I click execute um, and now I have, um, one, I have the URL. So if you were to call this from, from Postman or, or from an application, you can see here the entity, a purchase order top five and expand purchase item. And then I have um, the purchase orders. So, um, you know, the, the very first purchase order in the system is, is obviously zero one. And then here you can see all of the data related to this purchase order. And here's purchase order two, three, uh, four, and five. And of course, some of these have uh, line item data populated. So here you can see the purchase order item is, is null. So that means they don't have any line items. So here I could start to look at the field and make sure it's the, the data that I want. So um, purchase order type, um, payment terms, uh, for example, a requirement may be uh, give me all purchase orders for purchasing our organization 1710. Um, so you can look at all of these fields and start to analyze, okay, does it meet the requirement? So um, the, the API hub is, is very useful in testing out uh, these APIs and looking at sample data and seeing if it uh, meets your requirements. So for example, if I wanted to um, pull all purchase orders for a supplier, I could enter a filter um, supplier equal uh, So this would actually give me the five purchase orders for this supplier. So here, here we have uh, five purchase orders for the, the supplier, um, 173501. So um, this is how the, the API hub can be used. This is obviously a, a very uh, 
simple example, but typically you would look at the data, see if it meets the requirements and okay, it does. So let's take the next step. Okay, so now we have to expose the API in S4 HANA Cloud for consumption in the external system. So I'm going to go into my S4 HANA Cloud system and, and really there, it's a three-step process to, to expose an API hub or an API, excuse me. And in, in um, S4 HANA Cloud, it's actually extremely easy um, to, to expose an API. So the, the first step is essentially to create a communication user. Um, for those that, that have worked with, with SAP for um, a long time from an on-premise world, this is uh, the equivalent to maybe creating a system or a service user. Um, but in, in the cloud, it's a, a communication user. So I'm going to create a, a new communication user and we'll call it um, DT268 and I'll just say underscore 99. And then I'm going to use a proposed password. So this is the password. So I'm just going to copy this into um, my notepad window. So I have it for later and then create. So now I'm creating the, the, the communication users created. I should have been there, one second. Right. Okay, so I think I pasted the username back in the password field. Okay, so the communication user has been created. So now um, the next step is to create a communication system. And the communication system is really setting up um, connection details um, both into and out of S4 HANA Cloud. So if we look here, I'm just going to name it DT268 Sys99. So if we look, um, so typically in the event that, um, for example, if this communication system was going to send data to an external system, but also um, receive data from an external system, um, this host name is really important for sending data. So for example, if this, if we had an API that was going to send um, and the purchase order XML to CPI, the process integration, this host name field would actually be the host name of CPI. But because this is a, inbound scenario only, meaning I'm only querying um, at S4 for purchase order data. You, you can really put, put anything here or you can check um, inbound only and then you don't even have to enter the host name, but I'm just gonna put the host name there. And then here, here's the other two, two key fields for the system. So users uh, for inbound communication. So what this means is any system that is calling S4 would, would use this method. So um, you could have X509 authentication uh, using a client certificate, but in our case, we just created a user um, to handle this. So we're going to find our DT268 user. So now um, any API that uses this communication system can, can authenticate and uh, use this username. For, for outbound communication, I'm just going to select the client certificate of S4. Um, again, we don't have any outbound requirements today, but um, just in case there was a future requirement, I'm just going to say that. So outbound communication means S4 calling an external system. So for example, um, if you were going to send data to CPI, you would want to download this certificate here and then um, configure um, client certificate authentication in CPI by associating that certificate um, to, a, to a user or a role. So I, so I have created the user in the system. So now the final step is, is um, to, to go ahead and, and activate the, the, the API. So um, this is done uh, by creating a communication arrangement. So for, for those that have worked with SAP for, for a long time in a basis type role, um, you can think of this step as almost uh, activating services in the Internet Communication Manager or SICF, S-I-C-F 
this is not the same, but it's the equivalent, if you will. So here we're going to find the, communi the, the API communication arrangement that we need. And just, just recall that, um, sorry, let me try to move this window. If we think back, how do I know which, which API to um, activate? Um, if we look here, it's part of SAP 0053. It's also on 77, but, but I'm just using purchase order integration. So here is the communication arrangement name. So I'm just going to search for SAP COM 0053, purchase order integration. And I'm just going to append it with my session and then say create. So now um, here, so the communication arrangement is being created and it's asking me for, okay, what communication system do you wanna use? So I'm going to find the communication system I just created and then which username. So we only have one user, so it automatically put it in there. So that means um, this user, DT268 99 can call um, this API. So I'm going to save it. And you can see the, the activation was successful. So now, um, as an example, I should be able to go into Postman and you can take any, any OData API that you know the, the service name for, you can append metadata. Um, and I'm going to select basic auth and I'm going to take my username and password. 6899. And here I have um, the, the metadata of the API. So here I can see the purchase order entity. So I'm just going to take this now. And instead of using the API hub, now I have my system. So why don't I say, give me 10 purchase orders from, from my system. So I have to put um, top equal 10. And now I have um, 10 purchase orders from, from my system. So let's say um, a requirement is, is, okay, let me see all the, let me see 50 purchase orders with invoicing party. So I'm just gonna put a filter here, invoicing party equal, then I'm gonna use this. So now I have uh, 50, per, uh, well, at most 50 purchase orders where the invoicing party is 173401. Uh, so, and I'm just gonna pick a, a random subset of data. Um, well, first let me show you um, so here you can see um, other entities. So here you can use expand clauses on, on these guys. So I'm just gonna say expand. So what this does is it expands uh, the line items of a purchase order. So let me see if there are any lines for this guy. Doesn't look like it. Um, So um, yeah, so this would expand all, all of the, the purchase order line items for um, this invoicing party. So I'm just looking at the exercise real fast to see. I know the next step is Excel, but it, so let me just, so let's say we, we wanted to see, um, the requirement was um, basically give me a purchase order number, um, plant and material group for, for this invoicing party. So, so what I can do is you can put a uh, select clause and just list the fields you want. So I'm gonna say purchase order, uh, plant, material group. So obviously I'm just randomly picking fields for the, the demo. Um, and then uh, the, I was looking for an amount field, but I don't see anything really good. So I'm just gonna pick uh, expected overall limit amount. So now I have these four fields. Um, I said typo there in plant, <laughs> sorry about that. Oh, you know what, those were the line items. Um, sorry about that.
Okay. So we're, we're going to pick other fields. I apologize there. Hmm. Oh, I know what I did. Sorry about this, guys. So I'm, I'm going to put my expand clause back on because because we, we did have um, uh, items actually. So we're going to say it's purchase order item. Yeah. So th so this is actually a this is a good example. So, um, so now we're, we're at the line item level. So you can see this is um, item 10 of purchase order uh, 45000. So if you needed to select fields down at this level, um, all you need to do is um, preface it with the, the entity name. So I can say to purchase order item and I can pick uh, plant and then material group. Oh, sorry about that. This is why I probably shouldn't go off script. All right, so we're just going to use the purchase order node here, and I'm going to get a couple of fields based on the exercise. Uh, all right, so the the exercise to Excel actually just brings in, in all data. So um, a common requirement is, is to um, bring data out of S4 into Excel. And, and not, a lot of people may not know this, but um, Excel has a, um, a tool set to bring in OData queries. So you can say get data from other sources and then use from OData feed. And then here you can just enter um, the, the URL to the API. So you could use any OData API from the API hub, or you can create um, CDS views and expose them as OData and enter them as well. So here, um, I've already I've already accessed the the API from Excel, so I'm just going to put in my username and password. So here here I'm using the API username and password that we just set up. And then uh, it. It just gives you a quick preview. So I'm going to load the data. And now I have a data source um, in Excel. So here's all of the purchase order data for that invoicing part. So here you can see all of the fields on the API for that entity coming across as columns um, with their values. And, and recall that I put a uh, filter on for only 50 purchase orders. So you can see exactly 50 purchase orders. So, so far we've explored um, the API hub. Uh, we've tested the purchase order API. Uh, we've activated the API. We've tested it from Postman. We've pulled data into Excel. So now <clears throat> let's create a, a quick integration on uh, process integration to uh, consume this API and send it to a third party system. So I'm going to open up uh, C process integration. So um, I don't know how to minimize this. I'll just move it down here. So I'm in process integration. So I'm just going to click on. Um, the design icon, which is the pencil icon on the left. So now we're, what we're going to do is we're going to create an integration flow or an iFlow to um, extract out uh, purchase order data. So I've already created a package called uh, TechEd Exercises. So now um, we're going to create a, a new iFlow. So 
Um, bear with me, I'm just scrolling down to, to the exercise itself. So I'm just going to, um, so, so to create a new iFlow, you click on edit, go to uh, the artifacts tab, and I'm going to say add new integration flow. Then you can just give it a name. So I'm just going to call it DT26899. I'll just say click add demo for purchase orders. And then say OK. Uh, so now I, I can go into the design board for my um, iFlow. So in this example today, we're going to do a very simple um, integration flow where basically we call the API and then we extract it down in to CPI and then just drop it into the logging uh, because we don't have a third party system to send it to. So I'm, I'm going to, um, so in this case, we're gonna assume that uh, it's a scheduled event. So here we could um, schedule, schedule this extract to run um, hourly, daily, nightly, weekly, but, but for our purposes today, I'm just gonna use run once, which basically means or it means when I deploy the iFlow, run the integration exactly one time and then stop. So then I'm going to um, set up a content modifier. And then uh, we have our receiver down here. So again, it's a very simple iFlow. So I'm just going to basically um, use a request reply step to call S4. So we're, we're calling an OData API. And then we're going to um, log it um, just using Groovy script to the, the message as the message payload attachment, uh, MPL message payload log attachment, and then in the iFlow. So to call an OData API or to call any API from CPI, you reference uh, the credentials via um, the secure store. So I'm actually going to leave this window open, but I'm just going to jump um, into another window of the same CPI tenant or process integration tenant. And if I come into the operations view um, here, this is where you can monitor iFlows, but this is where the security is set up as well for, for CPI. So here I'm going to come down to uh, security material. And then I'm just going to create uh, a user credential artifact. So I'm going to call it DT26899. Um, and then the username and password is the, the same one from my API. So I'm just going to paste the password and put the username. So the, the nice thing about this is um, this name object, you would want to give um, something that is not environment um, that is not specific to the environment. Meaning, um, if you're calling Salesforce as a generic example, you could call it um, Salesforce cred. And then that way, when you transport these objects to production, um, your, your credential object in QNP would both be called Salesforce cred. So you can maintain different username and passwords and you don't have to worry about switching out um, the, the objects in the iFlow or the names in the iFlow. So I'm going to um, deploy this credential. So now if I come back to um, my uh, iFlow, so now we need to, to set up um, the call. So what I like to do is always, when I'm, when I'm setting up calls to an external system, I always externalize the parameters right from the start. So that it's a really good habit to get into. And I'll show you what, what this means when I save the iFlow again. But essentially when you externalize parameters, um, then those properties or parameters become uh, configurable via the configure menu on the iFlow. So you don't have to edit the iFlow after it's transported to production. And as a general uh, best practice, you should never be editing your iFlows um, in a different environment from which they were developed. So. I'm going to call this S4 hosting. So I'm just going to put the two curly braces and then I'm going to set up basic authentication. And here I'm going to say um, S4 cred name. And then my defined value is the credential object. And then here my defined value for the host name is uh, 
my S4 system. So I'm going to copy this, paste it in there. And then of course it's uh, HTTPS and then my API is this. Paste it and say, okay. Now, now I can come to processing and then I click on select and uh, work. So I'm, I want the purchase order entity. So if you were going to use a mapping step uh, after this O data query, uh, so if you had to map the, the payload XML into a different format, um, you would generate the XML schema definition or XSD, but I'm just going to pick a few fields here for the demo. Um, I'm just randomly picking ones, obviously. Uh, so here you can pick all the all the fields that you need for your requirements. And then um, say finish. And now I'm going to put on just to be safe uh, the top 50 purchase orders. And then the 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 final step that I mentioned was um, to to just log the payload from S4 uh, to the to, to the message payload. Um, so I'm going to create a new Groovy script. And this script is in the exercise, but um, it's a very simple script. So basically, um, all it does is log the, the query results. So um, as a general best practice, you should not use, so this is known as um, MPL login or, or message payload logging. And sometimes uh, because it, it does produce a verbose logging, developers get in the habit, myself included, of using this add attachment as a string method everywhere. But it's it's not best practice because um, these payloads are logged in the tenant database. Um, and there's actually a finite limit um, in terms of how much data can be logged over a 24 hour period. So um, you should only really be using uh, this type of logging for exceptional cases. Um, what I like to do is create a, a variable um, that's configure that's configure a parameter that's configurable um, that allows me to switch it on and off. So if there if there was an issue, I can try to replicate it using um, verbose logging and then turn it off. So this property is called um, in in my case it's called debug mode. So I'm going to come back to my content modifier, which is at the beginning create a new property um, called debug mode. And then he, here again, because I want it to be configurable, I'm just going to call it um, debug mode. And I'm going to set it to true. All right, so now I can save the iFlow. Uh, and, and before I deploy it, what did I, what did I mean by um, all those external parameters? So, if we come back to, so this is at the package level. Now, when this iFlow is transported to production, here's the configure. When I click on configure, now I have my host name, my credential name, and then I only have one property that's configurable with the bug mode, but these are all, these can all be set now in production, and then they will actually be maintained after future transports. So, when, when I make a change to the iFlow itself in the future and retransport it, those external parameters are not changed. So if this was for, pretend, for, uh, for a fictional scenario, let's say this was in production now, you should never be clicking edit in production because that breaks the transport dependency basically. So if you transported the iFlow again, it would overwrite any changes you did. So that's why you always wanna use um, external properties and then allow you to configure them here. So you should never be going um, into the iFlow itself to be changing things like host names or credentials um, for sure, because it, it creates a uh, maintenance nightmare to be honest. So I've, I've gone ahead and um, we, so we're calling S4 and we're just logging it. So let's go ahead and deploy it and see what happens. So I've deployed the iFlow. Uh, so I'm just going to come back to my operations view. And let's see.
So this is a this is actually a a brand new um, tenant that was just provisioned two days ago. So we've never, or I have never deployed an iFlow. So, but I don't see any problem. So it should work. So here, while it's deploying, I, I can show you. So um, under manage integration content, um, you can adjust things like uh, the log level of the iFlow itself. Um, so you can turn on uh, debug logging, which uh, debug logging doesn't produce uh, necessarily any additional logging for you, but it does show you the, the iFlow process uh, per execution and the, the steps that we're taking. Um, another very, very handy uh, logging feature is trace. Um, when you activate trace, it, it only lasts for 10 minutes, but when you have trace enabled, uh, it shows you uh, the iFlow and you can click on every single artifact in the iFlow and see um, the message payload, uh, the, property, the properties and their values, any request headers, any response headers. So when you're, when you're trying to troubleshoot a problem on an integration, uh, enabling trace is, is really the first step and it's extremely beneficial. So this, um, the slide flow is starting, so we're just going to give it a minute here to, to see. Um, in the meantime, are there any questions? So um, just in case this question goes up, no, it does not usually take this long to start a simple iFlow. I suspect it's because this is the first uh, iFlow on this tenant that, that has been deployed. Um, uh, and we do have some questions. Your flow was so nice and smooth that I didn't want to interrupt. <laughs> oh, no, no worries. So Are they in the, the first, chat? Uh, yeah, they're in the chat and I can just read them out just so everybody can kind of okay. follow along. So the first question we've got from Richard, it's where have you set the backend S4 system for the GET call or the GET call? So that is uh, in... With regards to the the integration, so, uh, and then Richard, feel free to unmute yourself if you'd like to ask some more questions. Hi, uh, thank you very much. Um, I mean, it was in the API hub uh, when we have uh, tested um, uh, the, the selected API, mm -hmm. and and I think we ha you have selected somehow the the sandbox, and I and and we have uh, just uh, given back some data. Um, okay, yeah, so um, when we um, provisioned, um, we, we selected the, the API that we wanted to use, and then uh, you clicked on execute, and then it gives us back some data. And there, yeah, I think this is. Yeah, so um, with, the, with the API hub, you can use any. Yeah, and here you can see the sandbox. Mm -hmm. And and uh, this is only a, a just a, a preset um, sandbox that just gives back some raw data or something, or or can we just uh, because when we publish uh, our APIs to the API hub from the S4, uh, can we test it from here or it is uh, just um, a tryout sandbox that is given by the by the system for us? Yeah, yeah. So a couple of points. So um, one. When you when you activate API hub or when you activate APIs in your S4 system, they actually don't get published to the API hub. So the API hub is all of the the SAP delivered APIs and their associated metadata with documentation. This this sandbox here that you see is a read only S4 HANA cloud system delivered by SAP. So you can only use read. Having said that. Now that we've activated the purchase order API um, in our S4 system, so um, I activated the purchase order API in my, in my S4 HANA cloud system, I mentioned that you can point the API hub to your system. So you can click on configure environments. And here I can say, um, so let's just call it DT268, provide the host name of, of this system. Uh, the port uh, for SSL is always 443. And then give the communication user and password. So here I can say this, and then it was DT26899. And 
if you wanted to use this um, across all of your packages, you could check this box. You could save it for future reference. Okay, okay. Um, so it is, uh, the sandbox is just for uh, testing purpose that we can test the read-only uh, API interfaces. Cor uh, correct. Scenario, but, okay. And but, we are, of course, uh, able to give our own S4HANA system. Yep. And, uh, yep. If, for example, we have an on-premise uh, S4 and it is provisioned uh, through a, a cloud connector to our uh, cloud environment, uh, can we set up this way? Um, so these... Um... But in that case, you will need the cloud connector, right? And then yeah, the configuration yeah, this, this for one, cloud... Yeah, this is why I'm, I'm telling that um, if I have a uh, on-premise um, S4, and I can provision the API, I mean the old old data access through the cloud connector to as a destination yeah. in the cockpit. And uh, then I only need, uh, then then I, I will have a host name for this um, old data that is uh, provisioned uh, through the, uh, through my cockpit. I would say as long as it follows this format. So mm -hmm. I know when you, when you, when you activate the API in the backend SAP system, this is, this is the uh, URL. Uh, yeah. yeah, okay. Okay, I think Sorry. I understand. Thank you very much. Yeah. And then just just to tie off this, this question, so now that I've um, brought in my own system, any of these operations would work. So now I could form a payload to, pa to, um, to create a new purchase order via post. And then you can see the sample payloads here. Um, to to tr to try to form your own delete would work um, or, okay. or update. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, and there was one more question, but I'm not sure. So Arthi answered, but then I think Roger had a question back. The original question from Roger is, is it possible to test API from Business Hub against S4 on-prem or does it have to be S4 cloud? Right, this is uh, somewhat in lines with what uh, Richard was asking right now. Uh, and uh, Roger, please please um, uh, unmute yourself and also talk um, if, if you think that answer was not enough. Um, at this point in, in time, API Business Hub doesn't um, allow you to configure for um, the on-premise uh, S4 HANA, um, mm -hmm. you know, um, for testing it out. Uh, but uh, we will definitely uh, take it into consideration for uh, the future, right? Thank you, Yorthi. So are you saying that we can't we can't click on the environment and create and configure our own premise system, even using that's cloud right. Cloud? Okay. That's right, not today. Okay. Thank you. Um. Okay, so that's all for the chat room questions. Is there anything else? There's nothing written, but yes, anybody um, that is watching this, if you have any questions right now, go ahead and unmute yourselves and feel free to ask them directly. I have okay. one more question. One more oh, question. Uh, when you have selected the right package, um, I mean, uh, how we could move, um, or, or there is no no packages that we could uh, import into the integration service that we can further develop. So that so this is quite uh, th this way we created a, a, a totally new package, right? So we are not uh, imported any any packages, uh, standard packages from the integration suit. Cor correct, so um, that's almost a, a, a whole session on its own. So this session was geared towards really um, developing a custom integration to, to extract data out of S4, but you're exactly right. So um, when, when you come to process integration, the landing page is actually the discover tab. And here you could look at the, the SAP delivered integration. So I'm just picking a random one so here's um, S4 HANA Cloud integration with Marketing Cloud. So you can pick this package. 
Um, you can look at look at the artifacts, look at the documentation, and if this is something that um, you're like, okay, these are the integrations that I need for for my marketing cloud integrations. Um, you can click on the copy package, and this will drop this entire package down into your your tenant, um, and and now you can work with these iFlows. So now these are these iFlows are now in your tenant. They're subscribed to the main package, of course, to get updates from SAP. But now you can start to work here um, and uh, configure and or um, you have to modify them. Uh, that being said, maybe I can just add uh, yeah. in the new API Business Hub experience, right? Uh, you will see that when you open API Business Hub, there's also this option to explore the beta version, um, mm -hmm. right? Uh, exactly this one, right? And here the experience is slightly, diff uh, you know, improving. So what you can actually do is also discover the right integration flow in the API Business Hub and get it delivered to the uh, you know, the uh, integration suite uh, tenant of yours. So you can actually configure which which is the endpoint, which is the tenant you want it to be delivered into. And you can just copy it. Instead of doing the copy on the tooling, you can actually do it via the API Business Hub and send it to the tenant, specific okay, tenant. So from the API Hub, we can directly copy this selected uh, uh, package to our integration suite. Correct, correct. You will have the option to, you know, just... Uh, move it to your integration suite. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think it's it's slightly on the tile itself, Marty. So it's when you explore and you see the tile there itself, you will have the option to um, move it to your right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Or under packages, correct? On the packages. On the packages. Yes. So, yeah, yes, there's exactly. that option, right? Awesome. And you can basically add it to workspace is sending it to that specific tenant of yours. Yeah, so I, I tried to stick to the, the exercises, but the Arthur's point, uh, this is the, the current API hub, but there has been a new beta version, which has is much more robust and has a lot more features um, that, that you can get to from the API hub as well. So uh, when it comes to the features, the functionalities, as well as the content that you're seeing, we are on a regular basis updating it. So, uh, uh, being a cloud world, right? You, you have that as our advantage. We are constantly delivering new features as well as constantly delivering new content. Uh, so, and, and to make this awareness um, uh, available, we have also what we call the uh, what's new, the monthly webinars, uh, which are uh, also in place. So you, you get the updates um, you know, uh, about all the latest and the greatest of the features there. Um, so as part of this webinar, if, uh, or, or the GitHub, maybe I'll just add in the links which you can access. What does it mean here, the beta? So it is uh, just a new experience which has built now. We are um, we are getting in a lot of feedback. We will in, uh, bring in that. Okay. And at some point in time, we will replace the API Business Hub as we have it right now uh, with this new experience, with this completely oh, new okay. experience. So only the experience is, is new, but the packages are uh, both uh, same on both platforms, on the old and the Absolutely. new Absolutely. They rely on the same repository of content. So it's just yes. the experience new. Correct, correct. Cool. Thank you very much. All right. Anything else? No. And, and my my iFlow failed. Um. Bear, bear, bear with me one second. If you want to <laughs> see the, the final XML, I'll uh, have it ready in thirty seconds. I have a misnamed variable. It looks like. Um. Are there any other questions before we wrap up? The suspense. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know where. Oh, I had a random copy and paste the uh, word that doesn't even belong there. So let's see. So just to talk through what, what I did there. Um, How can we uh, get no uh, more information on on uh, Groovy script or or examples for Groovy scripts because I think uh, there should be a lot of uh, similar uh, script uh, blocks that we can use. 
Yeah, I'll try to find the, um, there's a really good, good blog. And of course I don't have it handy. Oh, I, I think this is it. Um, no. Sorry, I missed that question. What was it once again? Um, yeah. Uh, Where we can find uh, resources on Groovy Script, and for example, uh, is there any uh, uh, a place where we can find um, template Groovy Script? Because there are a lot of uh, similar building blocks from Groovy Script that we can maybe use as a you know as a Lego uh, to build up our our um, Groovy Script. Yeah. Absolutely. So, uh, Marty, uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, two places that I would say is one, yes, API Business Hub. Uh, so, what yeah. we have is called something called as the Exemplars Package. I don't know, um, maybe you can just search with that. Right. It's called the Exemplars. Uh, and we also have a documentation. This is one place where you have all the templates all the possible templates already in place, which means that the Groovy script required to do a certain transformation, uh, that logic is also part of the template that you will have access to. Um, the other place is what we call as the integration guidelines, which has been documented and published. These are basically the best practices that SAP provides uh, when, when you are looking at um, how, um, you know, how to create a specific integration pattern and what are the constraints that you need to consider. So this will also include a definition of how you should use the Groovy script and um, yeah, that, that, that may be a good starting point. Yeah, so just, just sharing the, the exemplars really fast. So yeah, within these packages, there, um, there's a Word document and or um, for, for some of them, there's, there are iFlows as well. Um, and then if you just Google um, SAP CPI, design guidelines or SAP CPI best practices. There's a couple of blogs that, that provide a, a ton of links to, to examples. I, I can try to post these as well to the, the GitHub. And then I was just gonna check on this really fast before we wrap up. Okay, so um, recall that I just dropped the, the payload down into an attachment. So here you can see um, the purchase orders from, from S4. So, I mean, I doubt an external system would need it exactly like this, but you could do things like convert, convert it into a CSV file you could take this payload and make an additional call to a REST API in an external system as an example. Um, so yeah, so this is the payload from S4, just, just logged down in, into the CPI tenant. Right. Is it possible to call uh, a function modules uh, on the on-premise system from the integration service? Um, there, there, so there we have RFC adapters. adapters. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, no, I was just going to say that we have RFC adapters as well, okay, which can be fine. used. Um, yeah. The other other model, which a lot of our customers uh, also tend to use is, uh, um, you know, uh, making it into a Java call um, uh, and, and exposing it as a HTTPS then uh, using that, um, you know, across some, um, uh, both both uh, the extension scenarios, if they are using some um, web ID based Fiori application, building Fiori applications, as well as for um, integration scenarios. So they tend to also do that. Uh, so it depends on what exactly you are um, you are wanting to do. But from a technical perspective, the platform has um, the RFC adapter, which can be used as well. Anything else? All right, Vina, back to you. Okay, that was great. Well, thank you very, very much. 
um, both Marty and Arthi for being here, taking us through the demo, giving us a lot of information. Uh, it doesn't look like there's any questions in the chat. I'll have to apologize to everyone. I am unable to upload uh, links for you guys for resources at the time at this time, just because my internet is out. <laughs> and so I'm taking this call from the phone. So I will make sure to follow up in your thank you emails with all the links that you need for resources to the community. And I know that Marty and Arthi are also going to be posting some additional information on the GitHub link. So please, you know, go ahead and look at those resources at a later time. Um, with mm -hmm. that, we're going to close out this session. And I want to thank everybody involved um, for being here, for participating, and for making this a delight. Could you please thank uh, you, enable thank you, everybody. the chat uh, to be copied? Because uh, we can't uh, copy the content of the chat. Oh, yeah. I can do that. Yeah, thank you, Ron. It would be great if we can copy the, those links that you have shared with us. And also, okay. I would like to thank you uh, for you all. It was really great. Yeah, it was a good demo. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, good. Thank oh, you. It was quite interactive. Okay. All right. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.